Ladies and gentlemen, just one of the interwebs out there, Sebastian Envy, strong style, Cinna, file, and bat, woman. Let's gig about it first again in a few minutes because a lot happened in this episode. Some of it good, some of it not so good. Now the gist of this episode is Alice trying to get her hands on the joy buzzer because it has one buzz left. She thinks it's going to turn off the, the voices and make her normal. I'm definitely of the mind of like, who cares about Alice? Like I have long since campaigned for her to just be off the show because she has no reason to be on the show. But here we are, they keep putting her out there as if we're supposed to care or sympathize with her because she is going nuts or nuttier than usual or just her issues are just getting stronger and stronger the more time passes. I don't care. I don't want her on the show. Outside of that, you have Ryan and Sophie kind of after consummating their real relations relationship they're actually officially a couple and uh, it brought up some issues for sophie in this episode because she has never been in an out relationship before and she kind of wondered if this was going to be the first time that happens if the other person was going to be want to be out with her because she felt kind of hidden to this point by ryan or but i don't know like they just slept together like like you know the previous day as outside they slept together like the previous night on top of just weeks of just will they won't they on the side type of thing that nobody really noticed so like it just like there's nothing to be concerned about being out about i guess is what i'm trying to say maybe i don't know it just felt it like i understand where she's coming from it just felt like a weird thing to jump from like knocking boots to relationship concerns and how the relationship looks to the outside world you know it just it was a weird jump for me anyway in my opinion but they're out they're together they're official so everybody's happy with that I, again I'm of the mind that I really don't just I don't see the benefit of the relationship because of the fact that Sophie has slept with everybody else that's worn a bat suit all the other women that have worn a bat suit it just to me as I've said if this goes sideways and it's just Sophie coming to realize that number one she can be out and proud in a relationship and number two she doesn't need it that to be tied to somebody in the bat suit if we have to get that kind of growth from Sophie I'll be all for that otherwise it's just it just reeks of they occupy the same space and they both like women so let's stick them together I don't really particularly like that but it is what it is you had Mary trying to deal with the fact that she killed somebody and again um it feels like we're at the end of th that thing because she had mary showing that she kind of blames alice for like not stopping her which again it's like like mary did it regardless of you know she was under the the intoxication of being poisoned mary or whatever i mean alice played a part yes but mary still did the deed so for her to blame Alice for not stopping her. It's just like the blame shifting. I don't particularly like that. And then she goes to the family. It seems like she's going to confess to being the one that actually killed the guy. Apparently Alice called the police station and confessed to doing it first. So it saves Mary the grief of having to reveal that and go through that, whatever the reaction was going to be from the, the family of the victim. And it just felt like she was just all laughing and smiles by the end of the episode when she finds out about Ryan and Sophie and it just f feels like that's the end of it and if that's the case I don't like that I, it just feels very hand wavy let's sweep it under the carpet type of thing not a fan of that at all but here we are you have uh, the other part of the plot of the episode is Marcus kidnaps members of the Black Love Society, which apparently Jada Jet is a member of, and puts them through tortures and kills a couple of them. And him and Alice uh, spar over the joy buzzer. And eventually he, she agrees to give him information in exchange for the joy buzzer. That information leads him to the Batcave. So now Marcus is, has the Batcave and its resources at his disposal which closes out the episode saying let's have some fun at first marcus tried to sway her by pointing out the fact that they were born on the same day that the whole bus kidnapping thing marcus was on the bus 
kidnapped by the Joker. That's where he gets the joy buzzer. Joker rams the bus into uh, the Kane vehicle, which, you know, starts that whole thing in motion. So he tries to get on her good side saying, hey, we're the same. Alice still just wants to get rid of her demons while Marcus is embracing his. It, so while Alice gets thrown back into Arkham, she has given him information. So it's like twice now that somebody on Team Batwoman has given, or I guess Alice is a part of the team, whatever, has given Marcus information that will come back to bite them in the end. To what end? What is he going to do? Remains to be seen. We haven't seen much in the way of an overarching plot uh, with him, which is kind of par for the course of Arrow shows. We kind of meander through the season, padded out time through 20 some odd episodes, and then the, um, like the villainous plan gets it revealed in like the last two episodes or something like that. So it seems to be the case with this. He's going to do something. We just don't know what it is. So that's basically the gist of the episode. Like I said, there were some things in it, some interesting things, some good things, some bad things. The bad thing to me is just more Alice, God, Mary just seemingly just brushing off her conscience of what she did by Alice taking the like blame for it, even though she didn't kill the guy, Mary did, but you know. Um, and then Marcus just, and I saw an article which again, it was like talking to him in the context of him being the first black actor to play Joker. I'm all for just, um, anybody knows me, I'm as liberal as they come. I'm all for equality and equality in roles and, and stuff. I have no issue in certain cases with kind of swapping genders or races of certain characters and stuff like that. But there's certain ones that just don't need to be done that way. Joker for me is one of those ways. He is not a black joker to me, and that just sort of bugs me that they're like they're trying to present him as that because that's not what he is. He's a joker fanboy at worst. He needs to have like another name. But it just bugs me that we're going down this road of kind of having a wannabe as the main, like a wannabe bat villain is the villain for is the arch nemesis for bat woman. You know, it it's it. We don't need to do that. We could have done something different with him. Maybe it's just a numbers thing and a viewership thing and a rating center. They just, they just think that the mere association to Joker will pull in viewers, stuff like that. Not to me, to me it just looks stupid. Like we can't get Batman, so we have Batwoman. We can't get actual rogues, so we're gonna have these 2.0s, these wannabes. And they're like, he's playing, the, he's playing the role well. The actor is great. I love his scenes with Ryan, his scenes with um, Jada, even the scenes with Alice, I was bouncing off her. I like his just portrayal of like the madness and just the violence and ferocity that Marcus is capable. I love all that. So why couldn't we package that in something else? A totally different character, made up character for the show. You know, a lot of times they've had success making up characters for the show. They get pulled into the comics because they're so darn interesting. Why couldn't we try to do that with him? Why do we have to make him this, you know, black Joker? It, it, it's stupid to me, to me, to me. It's just, I don't like it, it's stupid. He could have been something else. He could have benefited and thrived as somebody else, somebody new, somebody different, but it is what it is. Here we are. Haven't seen anything about a renewal for season four of Batwoman. Uh, maybe we'll get an Alice Free Batwoman season four if we get that. Who knows? I just, like I said, some good things and bad things about this. Uh, overall, the season has been good. It's been interesting. Just it, there's still just some tiresome, bothersome Arrowverse things that they're doing that just bug me. But it's just, just it's what they do. Whatever. Anyway. Those are some of my thoughts on it. Scattered as they often are. We're going to go to other think. Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on social media. Talk to me there. Talk to me here. Until next time. Let us geek.